I was kind of alone and by myself and I felt it pulled between two different worlds because I didn't really have much of the signing ability and I wasn't really into the whole hearing world either. So I felt, kind of felt in between and didn't feel like I belonged. I had lost my hearing when I was six and um, my parents didn't know what to do with me. As brother and sister, um, we're twins and so we were always in the same grade but we never went to the same schools because he was in a deaf program and I went to a hearing school. Being a teenager alone is tough. Being a teenager with a hearing loss in an all hearing school is even tougher. Providing a place where they can meet peers, where everyone is speaking the same language, where they are understood. It's priceless. When we talk about success with some of the students in the program, of course, I always have to say our big success was to have the first person deaf to ever win an Academy Award. And that was Marley Matlin. When people come to our program, it depends on what they're coming for and we will make sure that we adjust to fit that group's needs. I came out and learned more about my suffering and I found the connection the kind of thing is definitely to be and I want to show my through acting. We were both kind of shy yeah. as kids yeah. and um, so being on stage in plays or dance shows whatever really kind of forced us to open up a little bit more. Most of the time what happens with a student that's new to our programs, they usually start with drama. And later on I'll confront them and ask them if they're interested in dance or if they've ever tried it. Most of the time they say no and they won't try it because, you know, they're deaf, they can't hear. No, 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 they're not allowed to. So I'll try and coax them into the dance room, teach them a few steps, and really within a few weeks I've got them hooked. Every year we tend to do one family musical in the winter time and that tends to be with a really great family theme and then we have our outreach programs that are going out and performing at different locations throughout the year. Everything that we do here there's a lesson involved. Everything that we do in outreach no matter how entertaining or fun it may seem, it is at the same time teaching. We teach a lot of children and teenagers through Story and Sign, this museum, camp. Camp is all about teaching the kids the deaf art. ICOTA needs a permanent home. We have grown so dramatically that we are not able to serve the community in the best possible way because we don't have enough space or appropriate space. You can't help but catch the enthusiasm that is here every day. You can't help but catch the helpful and, and giving spirit that's here every day. I think I've got a lot of pride in my culture through ICODA. They have taught me um, self-esteem, how to present myself, how to handle different situations, and probably most importantly, they taught me that my disability is not um, an obstacle. In all honesty, if there was no ICOTA, I wouldn't be in this profession that I am today. I would not be an actor. I think what we need to do is to spread the message to everyone that ICODA is there and available for deaf and hard of hearing individuals who want to participate in the arts uh, to provide opportunities for individuals who might like to paint, who might like to act. It's a necessary aspect and that means we need to have offices, we need to have facilities, we need to have a museum, we need to be able to show up the entire history of ICODA and what it's been able to contribute to the community. It's critical for everyone to understand and support and see. And I can't imagine a world without ICOTA. I can't. What would the deaf children do? Where would their opportunities for participation in the arts be? We need
need that guidance and ICODA is there to support them.